CJ, Tornado Jones, welcome back to another exciting edition of UWC. My name is Jimmy Carrot, I'm the Powder Keg, you know me quite well. You see, as it is, you are uh, one of very, very few people in recent memory to have uh, pinned my shoulders to the mat successfully, so for that, congratulations. You aren't the first, you won't be the last. But TJ, what you don't understand is you have absolutely no idea what kind of nightmares lie coiled under my pillow. You have no idea. Nothing hits you like I do. But tonight, you have the opportunity to find out. I can't wait to show you, honestly. I can't wait. Sometimes I have to show you the positive to make you see the negative. Sometimes I have to show you the negative to make you see the positive. It's all, it's all very subjective. But you see, tonight, I'm issuing a challenge personally to you, TJ. Norman Rockwell with a bullet versus Tornado Jones. I'm begging you, step in the ring. I will show you that everything that you did was a fluke. I will show you that there was never any reason for you to beat me other than the fact I had an off night. Maybe you were just really on that night. You won't be tonight. I can guarantee you that. Step in the ring. And I will take your life if I have to. in there with Sam Knight and this is a preview of the uh, triple match that's going to be going on at the, uh, the heat is on coming up on July 31st the third man in that match will be Bo Sawyer and again you're talking about three people with completely different wrestling styles you may have two people on the very opposite end of the spectrum here and the uh, Sadistic Warden and uh, the man, the right hand of God, uh, Sam Knight. And the Warden, kind of is he laughing on his way in, chuckling his way at Sam Knight. Sam Knight wants that belt. This is a non title match. And turning his back to him is the Warden. Knight turns around and pushes him into the ropes. He's not going to get in my head. Well, he got a right hand to the side of the head. And now the Warden going after him. Third right hand to the side of Sam Knight. Sam Knight has become a fan favorite in the weeks he's been here. Oh, he comes back with a few of those right hands of his own. Sends the Warden into the ropes. And pow! And the Warden almost goes up and over. And that time he does. Up and over and out and lands on his feet. He's going to take Sam Knight out with him. Punch to the side of the head. So far, that's been all of Warden's offense is a punch to the side of the head. And he sends Knight reeling once again. This is a non-title match, by the way. And again, a punch to the side of the head for the Warden. And, whoa! He hit the UWC online post, and now a clothesline right into that post. And Nad may take out that right hand for the rest of the match. Referee counting. One wrestler in, and the second wrestler in, too. And a quick two count for Sam Knight. Fans are really rallied behind Sam Knight. You can hear it. They would really like to see someone take that title away from the Warden. And picks him up. Drops him. And some momentum going Sam Knight's way. He comes off the ropes. The second ropes again, and the clothesline sends the man down. Cover for the pin. One, two, and no. Didn't quite have enough torque to keep him down. Warden, an odd individual. I have to admit to avoiding talking to the man as much as possible, and he doesn't talk to me anyway. Couple of double axe handles to the back, and now it's the warden on Sam Knight in the middle of ring rope. Referee trying to get him off. It's over the count of three, and another right hand, and hand not showing too much effect from that punch to the pole. Now the warden just stomping Sam Knight, sending him down. Boot to the throat. 
Warden goes outside now. Going to use the ropes for some extra leverage on that chin lock, really bending that upper back across. You can see forcing a bridge. Now he's looking up. What's he going to plan here? Drops an elbow as Knight was teed up on that bottom rope. And Knight may be out. Knight is laying across the apron. Now you see him moving a little bit. But really, the, the offense for the Warden in this has all been not so much wrestling moves as just brutality. Now, working a modified Cobra cut clutch across that bottom ring rope. Gets the break. Knight trying to fire back to the midsection, but an elbow to the top of the head stops that. And again, Knight trying to fire back. Gets to his feet. And another right hand by the Warden sends Knight to that second rope. And fires again. He's been pounding away with that right hand. I think that we need to be checking into those uh, tapes he has around his hand as much as he uses that fist. Now, oh, reversal into the ropes. No, double reversal. Kick to the midsection. And up another right hand. The Warden coming off the ropes. Landed! Knight catches him. Cover. One, two, no. There goes the straps down for Knight. Now he's warmed up. Oh, he's setting up for something. He's setting up. The Warden staggering up to his feet. Here comes Knight. And he's thrown into that post. Thrown into that post. Getting out of the way of the Warden that time. Oh, up the fireman's carry. And working his way down into a roll-up. Two, three. He got the pin. He got the pin. Sam Knight counters into a roll-up small package for the pin. And Sam Knight gets the upset win over the champion, the Warden. Now he doesn't get the belt for this one, but that's going to be, well, maybe a little mind games on the Warden now. As you head into that triple threat match, he's in the ring with someone who he knows has beaten him one, two, three. And also Bo Sawyer, who can beat anyone at any given time. The Warden goes down to defeat the right hand of God. Sam Knight gets the one, two, three. We've got a lot more to come on UWC Online. Wednesday nights after Lucha Underground. Tune in to UPTV6 for a full hour of pro wrestling in Central Illinois, starting off with the nosebleed seats, presenting action from across the region, news and interviews, followed by UWC Online with weekly episodic wrestling from Georgetown. That's the MBS TV at 10 p.m., followed by UWC Online at 10.30 p.m., only on UPTV6. What's it going to be? What's it going to be, United Wrestling Coalition Online? What's it going to be next for Harker Dirge? I've already taken care of a real good piece of business, something that was weighing on my chest and laying heavy on my back like Atlas carrying that globe. But people, you just got to watch and figure it out for yourself because maybe I don't even know yet. But I've loaded that ship and next time you hear that big kaboom, you know who came to town. That's right, United Wrestling Coalition. Bingo! Oh, it's Harker Dirge, and he didn't even need the free space. What would happen if you try to use applesauce for everything? A sponge. A lamp. Even a bar of soap. How about shampoo? Don't settle for a cheap substitution. United Wrestling Coalition is live every Friday night in Georgetown.
And now, fans, let's give you a special treat as we go back in time and check out a classic UWC Online matchup taking place at this year's Domestic Disturbance when Travis Weir took on Shank Barzini. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Domestic Disturbance, the UWC. I'm Eric Loy in the commentary booth, and we've got ourselves a great card of action for you, professional wrestling. You see Travis Weir going after Shank Barzini to start things off. Travis Weir, Travis Barzini throws him over the top rope. Ow, man, he really hit hard on the outside. About broke his back on that apron. Dickie Wabash coming over and just about getting uh, tagged for his troubles. We have a tremendous card for you including the championship match between Harker and Blake Green. And you can see Travis Rear missing that, well, missing it a second time. Barzini just one step ahead of him. Tried a double elbow and landed nothing other than himself. And Barzini up in the corner. Coming off, has an elbow of his own coming off the top rope. Shink Barzini is all sorts of crazy wrapped in a small package. This young man going to go after Travis Weir in the corner. And trying to, nope, gets dropped right off that top rope. Might have broken a nose there. Really just kind of ripped at that nose. And now Weir is going to do some of the job himself in the corner. And Barzini is down. Now holding his neck. Back stomp by Weir, using his weight against him in that corner. Weir certainly has changed his outlook from just a few weeks ago. Barzini tries to fire back, and Weir pounds him, rakes across the back in the corner. Weir turning on his tag team partner, the fabulous Jason B, a few weeks ago, and joining up with the Wabash Talent Agency. Now going at the eyes of Barzini, certainly a little more fierce. Oh, down into the lower midsection and a second headbutt in the lower midsection by Barzini and a headbutt. And that's not going to do anything to Weir. Setting him up for a suplex, maybe. Up and down. Well done. And a rolling cover just gets a one. Kind of a spinning kick out. You can see Barzini in a little bit of trouble. And again, going to that back and raking the back of Shank Barzini. Stomping across that bottom rope. Weir had been certainly used to the crowd cheering in his favor in the past, but recently getting back with his uh, former tag team partner, Blake Reed, and joining the Wabash Talent Agency. Now look at this. That's a, oh, a spinning toe Spinning toe hole. This is a submission hold. And he's got it locked in well. And you notice he's backed up. Now got a little too close and rolled up. No, no, no. The referee called one, but his shoulders weren't down. Now Barzini gets caught with a clothesline. The referee anticipated a pinfall that time. And I think Weir caught him off guard by not getting that shoulder down. Now Weir back up. Half Nelson from behind. Elbows coming off, comes off the ropes, tries to get some momentum, and gets planted for his trouble in a cover by Weir. It's pretty arrogant. And too close to the ring ropes says Barzini. You can hear Wabash across the way. You can probably see him on your screen yelling stratagems to his man, Travis Weir. Elbow really. Weir is a is a very solid wrestler, but the last couple weeks has been more of a beatdown style. Now you see Barzini gets out of the way. Now up over the top. No, not a sunset flip, but a straight over and a clothesline. Down goes Weir. A drop kick to the knee. Good job taking the pin out of the big man. Back off the ropes. Flying headbutt. Down goes Weir. Travis Weir is down, and you see his manager, or handler, Dickie Wabash. Now, 
Shank Barzini going out. What's he got? Oh, he's got his got his bottle of hot sauce or syrup or something. That's all Shank Barzini needs is something to amp him up. He gets ready. But in that meantime, he's let Weir get back up. Whoa, he gets the big man up and outstanding fire is carry. Weir works his way out of it. That was impressive. Weir, power slam. One, two, and three. And that's it, folks. Well, that was pretty impressive. Shank Barzini got the big man up. But the big man won out. Weir dropped off of him into the power slam. And just like that, one, two, three, and you see that certificate but your winner in the first match of domestic disturbance is Travis Weir we've got a lot more coming up infinite power that standing fireman's carry. This could be very much it. I do believe that's a one, two, and three. There we go. Jimmy Carrot, the powder keg, going up against one half of the uh, UWC Tag Team Champions, Tornado Jones. There's a tornado warning in Georgetown tonight. And you're going to see some crazy stuff in this match. I can just about guarantee you, Tornado Jones, who hasn't seen an aerial move he doesn't want to take, and Jimmy Carrot, who not only will do the aerial moves, but is just plain insane. One thing to remember, Carrot sometimes loses the focus and then just, and just sometimes he decides he just wants to beat somebody up. He doesn't really care about the win. Tornado Jones, about as fair as athlete as you can get. Plays by the rules as much as possible. Now a little showing off by Jimmy Carrot. Tornado Jones goes up to the top, gets the crowd behind him. Let's see what his entrance is going to be. Up, and flip off the top rope and lands. So, a little show up of Jimmy Carrot. Carrot, slightly amused. And the crowd shouting for TJ, Tornado Jones. One half of the Tag Team Champions uh, going for a test of strength. Carrot and Jones goes for the kick, doesn't go. No, it doesn't go. Smack right across the face. Swing and a miss, comes out, picks him up. Well, throws him off that second rope. Coming off the ring ropes again, Jones. Whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Carrot's ahead of the game there, but maybe not ahead of that one. Yes, he was ahead of that one. Goes up, swing and a miss. Coming down. One. Nope, just one. Moving too fast now for me. Cover this time. Maybe too fast for the ref. Off the ropes. Kicks that knee out. Down again. And oh! A little Mysterio action. Actually, for those of you who uh, remember you wrestling a little further back. Art Bar, the juicer, used that move. Now coming in, trying to dive on the outside, and Carrot catches him. Catches him with a kick coming out. You may think that Carrot and a cover. Ah, no, just the two. Strange thing about going up against Carrot in the ring, and many strange things actually, is that Carrot may seem to be one step behind, but sometimes he's four steps ahead. He plans to be one step behind, and then he catches up to you. 
That time it's just flailing away as Tornado Jones in the knee to the midsection takes Jones down. The crowd trying to bring Jones back into it. As you can see, straight out slam by Jimmy Carrot. The powder keg. And a cover. One, two. Carrot in a rare match where he does not have the speed advantage, but he definitely has the strength advantage and the experience advantage. Jones in the corner, eats the right hand. And another right hand by Carrot. Carrot is about as a wild card as you can get. Goes in and ooh, eats the boot right to the side of the head. And picked up again and... Oh, spinning power slam. How about that? And a one finger count, which isn't going to do it. He knew it. He knew it. He's going to try again. Over the other side. Nope. He knew that wasn't going to work. He just doesn't... Sometimes he just doesn't seem to care about the win. He just grinds the face through the mask of Tornado Jones into the mat. Joey O'Reilly is going to be involved in one of the three ways coming up on the 31st. Let's see what Tornado Jones is going to be doing for those matches. Get to see what Jimmy Carrot is going to be doing. Maybe these two will match up. Comes off. Frogs up and over, trying for a sunset flip. Carrot gets the advantage and grabs him and brings him straight up. And drop kicking away. Picked him up by the neck, but he was able to get his feet up and drop kick him away. Now Tornado Jones. Jones is a wrestler that lives in the now. I think that's the best way to put it. Driving in is Carrot. I'm not quite sure what time period Jimmy Carrot lives in. Carrot getting some grief from the fans, and now Jones with a running drop kick sends Carrot into the corner. Another running drop kick. And Carrot flopping around. Up off the ropes. And what's going to be done here? Roll and whoa, flap straight down. He's going to roll him over for a pin cover. One, two, no. His referee says, no, no, that was three. Jones says, that was three. No, it was two. Jones trying to figure out what to do against a character as slippery as Jimmy Carrot. Again, you never quite know where Jimmy Carrot is. Now, oh, ouch. Taking far too long to get up for that move is Tornado Jones. Now Carrot going up with him. And you know, Carrot will sacrifice his body for anything. Now just ripping at the eyes and mask of Tornado Jones. They're up on that top rope. Anything here is gonna be destructive for both wrestlers. Oh, tries to bring him up, but Jones hangs on. Oh, not gonna do it. Jones, elbows, second elbow, and a third knocks Carrot to the mat. And Jones still trying to recover from the um, shot to the jewels that he took earlier. Gonna climb to that top rope. Rife. Carrot throws Underwood into the ropes and again, dropping down onto that turnbuckle is Tornado Jones. Jimmy Carrot trying to figure out what to do here. He says, oh, I'm going to go the other way this time. First way didn't work so well. What's this going to be here? This can't be good. Oh, a Canadian destroyer type move off of this? This could be very, very bad. Working off the top. Well, rolls him up. Didn't quite get what he needed. And it falls apart. It fell apart, but still might be enough for the cover. One, two. No, he brought him up. He brought him up. That move didn't land quite the way you would like. And I'm sure 
I'm sure that Carrot wants to finish on a higher note than that. He brings Jones up. He could have probably had the one, two, three. He brought him up. Now, what's this here? Carrot. Yeah, the crowd, Larry with TJ and Carrot says, yeah, just keep doing it. Whoa. Yeah, a quick roll up, stop and roll. Two, three, he got him. He got him, TJ. Tornado Jones gets the win over Jimmy Carrot. Carrot took too long. Jones stopped the momentum. Pulled him back with a roll up. Well, one, two, three. And Tornado Jones gets another singles victory. They won half of the tag team champions. A big win over the former UWC champion, Jimmy Carrot. And Carrot is beside himself in the ring. But he had his opportunity. And that sadistic nature. Get him in, and he does not get the W. Goes to Tornado Jones. Folks, get ready. The heat is on, coming up July 31st here in Georgetown. You want to be there for it. For everyone in the back, for all the wrestlers and all the folks who put this show together, I'm Eric Loy up in the Crow's Nest. We'll see you next time on UWC Online.